Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. This is the fourth and last of a series of videos on the topic Three Ways to Achieve Physical Rejuvenation by Alice B. Claggett. This, the last in the series, is entitled Expansion of the Body of Light During Solar Events opens the DNA to greater manifestation of its inherent potential. This video has lots of images in it and will, it, it has a rather complicated series of things to explain, things beyond the can of most people, uh, things that involve light worker techniques and techniques for people who are ascending on New Earth things that haven't been brought out into the open before. And so, we'll see how it goes. This is the beginning of the text. There's another way in which expansion of the body of light occurs. That's the body of light of each individual human being. That is during solar events such as Earth-directed coronal mass ejections, or CMEs and during incoming solar winds. You know, the northern lights or auroras are examples of solar events impacting Earth that can be seen in the skies of the North Pole. I have here a picture for you called Aurora by Roland Boisvert, uh, which I found in Wikimedia Commons. So it's Creative Commons license, and I can show it to you today. It's very beautiful. Nice, huh? You can imagine those so same types of electromagnetic fireworks occurring in our own energy fields during CMEs as we reflect Earth's electromagnetic field in our own electric field and magnetic force. So this... This beautiful effect right here might be happening over the top of our heads during a solar event here on Earth, if you can imagine it. When these solar events ramp up Earth's magnetosphere, the light worker in particular senses expansion of his or her body of light. You remember the body of light is that grand body of electricity uh, and light electromagnetic fields all around the great oval shape, much bigger than the person, farther out than your arm can reach. That's how far your electromagnetic field is. Um, thus the transpersonal chakras move from dormancy to functional mode during these expansions of the light. The transpersonal chakras are those above the head and also you have the subpersonal chakras beneath the trunk of the body, beneath the torso. When solar events ramp up Earth's magnetosphere, the light worker in particular senses expansion of his or her body of light. Thus, the subpersonal chakras beneath the bottom of the torso and the transpersonal chakras above the crown of the head move from dormancy to functional mode. That is because they're charged with electromagnetic force because of the uh, influx of light into the electromagnetic field of Earth herself. Now it's important to note on the astral plane that in the area of the subpersonal chakras that are often dormant uh, be beneath the bottom of our torso and of the transpersonal chakras which are above the top of our head, there are floating about beings, astral beings, that may be either positive or negative. The beings of our uh, ascension team are positive beings that are here to help us, but there are other beings that, that don't mean well by us, that exist in, what you might say, conflict with those 
Ascension team members in, this, in the area of the subpersonal chakras and the transpersonal chakras. So when there's an influx of light through a solar event, um, it starts off with a kind of a, a bang where we can sense the the fight that's going on between our own champions, our ascension team, and those other types of astral beings. For instance, beings of the hell world that exist in the subpersonal chakra arena, and other beings that weren't known till now, until very recently, that are negative but exist uh, in the transpersonal chakra arena. With that in mind, I'll continue with the text. I've got some pictures for you. I don't know what you're going to think about them. Uh, up north of the crown chakra, floating about in the air, be before or and after the solar event, are some beings that I term astral thuggies. Thuggy is like a thug. It's an Indian term. And I've talked about it quite a bit in my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth. Uh, the blog can be found at https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com You can go there and search for the term thuggy, which is spelled T-H-U-G-G-E-E. -E. So, here's a drawing I made of the astral thuggies. That's me at the bottom pointing up to these beings in the air. Astral thuggies, who, who look kind of mean-faced and their bodies can be kind of amorphous or uh, swirling around and not too obvious that their faces, uh, if you could but see them, their faces look pretty mean. And so they're not just standing in one place, they're moving around up there and they're creating mischief. Normally we don't know about it because our transpersonal chakras are not active until the solar event. And then we notice, we notice something up there. And if we place our awareness up there, along with our, with our ascension team's awareness, we can vanquish them. So, negative beings such as the astral thuggies up there that otherwise create dark interference in the region of the transpersonal chakras are flung out of our energy field and the incoming light flows down revitalizing our physical and subtle bodies. A lot depends on the attitude we have towards these beings that are being thrown out. We can go, oh my gosh, there are horrible beings up there, or we can go, oh my gosh, the beings are being thrown out and the incoming light will purify my entire energy system. And I feel that to be the better path. I've drawn a picture of what some term a dark attack during incoming light download. The dark attack is when you realize that the, the astral thuggies are up there or when you realize there are hell world beings existing in your subpersonal chakras beneath your torso at, because the light throws them into stark relief the incoming light of the solar event throws them into stark relief. You realize that they're there and you feel that you're undergoing what is termed by the light workers a dark attack. But in reality, you are simply becoming aware of the existence of these astral beings. You see? So, here's a picture of what some term a dark attack. I drew the picture. A picture of a man. This is his body of light. Uh, in the middle, in the middle up and down, that's a central vertical power current or uh, kundalini. Here you have the light coming down from heaven. And there you have his, this man's uh, energetic torus uh, that's bisected by his kundalini or, or central vertical power current. It looks a little like a donut with a hole in the middle. And the man standing just in the middle of the donut. Um, so you have energy coming down like this and down like that around the and through the uh, electromagnetic field and 
interpenetrating up here into all of the physical organs and the subtle body organs through the central vertical power current and you have an influx of light coming down from heaven and an influx of energy coming up from the core of earth if you can see it this man looks kind of upset and that's because he's beginning to notice the astral thuggies I should read you the caption of this of this picture of a dark attack and before I read it notice this dark energy here and this little dashed circle here and another dashed circle up here and so because I'll, I'll be referring to those in the caption it goes like this this is an image of a man standing facing forward around him is his torus shaped electromagnetic field also known as the aura or the body of light the torus shaped like an apple with a hollow core is shown in cross-section in the drawing. Incoming light, yellow, with arrows to indicate direction, flows down from above and then down around the outside of the man's energy torus. The hollow core of the man's energy torus, which lies along the man's spine, is colored gray, indicating he is experiencing a dark attack. The two dashed circles above the man's head are transpersonal chakra one, the lower one, and transpersonal chakra two, the upper one. Both are gray, indicating they are deactivated because of the dark attack. So then you as the ascensioneer, as the light worker, as the gatekeeper, as the way shower or healer, you find yourself in the middle of what seems to be a dark attack. <laughs> the sound of the high-flying plane seems to me a little like a dark attack. <laughs> and, um, and first at first moment you say to yourself, oh my gosh, and then you place your awareness where the trouble is, wherever that is, either above or below, and ask your sentient team for help and what then happens is like a miraculous transformation. It looks like this drawing that I did of the same person uh, with an influx of, of rejuvenating light. Okay, here's the person, the same energy field, the same torus, in the middle the same central vertical power current. Here you have the transpersonal chakras up here and the subpersonal chakras down there. And you can see that above and below this person and permeating his central vertical power current is a beautiful golden light. And that is the incoming light coming in and healing the physical and subtle bodies. Ah, uh, I should read this caption, this caption for this picture. You have to keep the picture in mind, okay? Have you got the picture firmly in mind? The energetic donut, the electromagnetic field of the human body, the body of life. And I'll read you the caption. Around this man is a torus-shaped electromagnetic field, also known as the aura, or the body of light. The torus, shaped like an apple with a hollow core, is shown in cross-section in the drawing. Incoming light yellow with arrows to indicate direction flows down from above then down around the outside of the man's energy torus then upward through the hollow core of the energy torus which lies along the man's spine the two dashed circles above the man's head are transpersonal chakra one that's the lower one and transpersonal chakra two that's the upper one both are glowing white and activated because of the flow of the incoming light upwards to the core of the man's energy torus, which is to say, the experience of Kundalini rising. And here's a comment on this picture. In this instance, the core flow is shown as being from the feet of the man up through the top of his head. That is the experience I have had of the incoming light. I feel it is likely that in times when Earth experiences a pole reversal, 
the direction of flow of the incoming light through the torus of humans may shift, mirroring that of Earth. What that experience may be, I leave to the future explorations of light workers. Okay, so that is the caption for this picture here the picture of the incoming light blessing the energy field of a human being. It's a question of how we emotionally accept the events that happen in our life. It may seem to us to be a total catastrophe or it might and we might feel fear and our and our DNA might be damaged by it or if we call on our Ascension team for help and if we realize that God has our best uh, interests in mind then we can experience what otherwise would appear to be uh, a conspiracy theory event, an event full of fear, an event such as for instance a pandemic that, that threatens our physical form. We can experience all these presumptively very bad things in the light of God's grace and transform them and transform our physical and, and our subtle bodies in such a way that, that they're rejuvenated. It's up to us. We can experience rejuvenation in the face of what many people consider to be utter destruction. This body is infinitely regeneration capable. It's infinitely rejuvenation capable. But our faith flags, you know, that's a determining factor, faith. Well, I have some more pictures for you. Now to continue with the text. Since the 2012 shift, and as the ascension process continues on Earth, when solar events occur, we humans in ever-increasing numbers are beginning to experience the new you, the state of the new human. Christianity, 2,000 years ago and thereafter, attempted to describe this state uh, as the state of the arisen Christ, of the ascended Christ. And there's been some absolutely beautiful artwork along those lines, um, showing the strong uh, energy field of the sixth chakra as being a, like a halo around the head actually probably indicating awareness of the sixth dimension maybe even the seventh dimension and uh, it, it portrays an elevated state for Christ as being the actual movement of his body upward into the air um, and it, it, it portrays the state of the apostles and the saints of the early religion as being very similar to that of Christ, as being Christ-like. This is in fact the type of energy field that the light workers today term Christed and Buddhic consciousness. And I have here a beautiful picture illustrating. This is a painting called Ascension by an artist Giotto di Bondone, G-I-O-T-T-O-D-I-B-O-N-D-O-N-E. -E. Uh, it was in the year 1337 or thereabouts, and it's featured in Wikimedia Commons, so it's in the public domain, and I can show it to you. There's Christ at the top. Looks like two angels beneath him. like saints all around him, some of them with wonderful halos on. And so this is the state of ascension here, or awakening, that which Christ is experiencing. And others are replicating that, that Christ consciousness. Those people down below on the ground are replicating that. This is the state that the light workers are talking about. State of Ascension. I'll read you the, uh, the uh, caption of that painting. Christ in a white robe 
Christ in a white robe and with a golden halo ascending. On his left are two rows of people in the air. These people have dark halos. On his right are two rows of people. Some of these people have golden halos. At the bottom, two angels with long white and gilt robes, with wings and with golden halos. That's directly beneath him. They are hovering in the air, just above the earth, and just beneath a little cloud on which stands Christ in the sky at the top. To the angels left and right are saints in variously colored robes, kneeling and looking upward towards the ascended Christ. The saints are wearing robes of various colors. They have their palms together in prayer and have gilded halos. Now I'll continue with the text. In the state of the new human, Portions of the DNA of our body cells that have remained dormant for the last long eon become active. We see with new eyes the physical reality along with the superimposed higher realities. We are able to use our ascension skills. We become more capable of multi-temporality and multi-dimensionality. In a flash, we can optimize our timelines and dimensions. We can interface seamlessly with our helpful, in quotes, away team, end quote, or ascension team. Thus, solar events for the light worker become eagerly anticipated opportunities to enjoy new life on new earth. In this new solar cycle 25, ever-expanding circles of people are coming into their light worker potential and activating their ascension skills and gifts. In that way, a new earth is being fashioned for us, the new humans. I have here for you one more painting. It's called Jacob's Dream. It's by noted mystic and painter William Blake, and I found it in Wikipedia Commons. It was painted in 1805, so it's clearly in the public domain. Jacob's dream has to do with a ladder, a ladder that went from where Jacob was lying sleeping up into heaven. All right, here's the painting. You can see Jacob at the bottom, sound asleep. Then there's this stairway up into heaven, see? And there are beautiful beings walking up and walking down that ladder, Jacob's ladder, Jacob's dream. I'll read you the caption. In this illustration of a Bible passage, Jacob lies sleeping on the ground. Above him rises a spiral stairway which seems to go up through a golden tunnel, at the top of which is a golden light. Men and women and children walk up the stairway towards heaven. One woman with a jug of water on her head stands at the bottom of the stairs. Winged angels walk down the stairway, bringing gifts to earth. Now here's my comment. In terms of ascension lore, the golden tunnel might represent a gateway or portal opening from the higher realms. The spiral staircase might be the new DNA being brought to Earth. The golden color of the light at the top of the tunnel might represent the incoming light. The winged angels might represent angelic members of Jacob's ascension team. The woman with the jug of water on her head at the bottom of the stairs might represent another sort of Ascension team member, a being of light, one of our star brothers and sisters, bearing new water of life for new earth. And the people on the stairway might represent not departed souls,
but ever evolving incarnations of Jacob's soul. These are rising higher and higher in multi-dimensional and multi-temporal awareness as his soul seeks to experience the ascension process. Thus the dream might be of a Jacob incarnate in this, the dawn of new life on new earth, and a future progress of his soul in this exhilarating evolutionary age. Well, that's all for this series, Three Ways to Achieve Physical Re Rejuvenation by Alice B. Claggett. Um, I have for you just a few references that, in case you want to do more research on the topic from my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth. Uh, the blog can be found at https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com and when you get there you can search for these three um, blog titles. The first is Reptilian Strands Resolving in the Noosphere. That was written by me in 2017. The second is Dark Attack and Incoming Light Download. And these are drawings I did in 2021. And the last is Compendium colon, Rising to Awareness that was published in 2019. They're all on my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth. Well, that's all for now, dear ones. May you be blessed with God's grace and his rejuvenating strength throughout these times. And may you find his light and love always to be by your side. May the Ascension team that was assigned to you during this incarnation be ever at hand, ready to rejuvenate your physical form. God bless you all. Keep you safe and be with you through all your days.